Well, I posted videos on the sonic weapons attack in Cuba where we had, oh, I don't know, 23 American diplomats, those working at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba, coming down with brain injuries. Well, now it's China. All right. One American falls ill after abnormal sounds. This is a bizarre New York Times article. An American government employee posted in southern China has signs of possible brain injury after reporting disturbing sounds and sensations. It parallels with mysterious ailments that struck American diplomats in Cuba. State Department has issued a warning through the United States Consulate and have advised American citizens in China to seek medical help if they felt similar symptoms. But it said that no other cases had been reported. So they had one American employee come down with symptoms and read this article. What are the symptoms? Well, it doesn't detail what the symptoms are. I hope the United States Consulate have detailed those symptoms so that the American citizens in China, well, if they come down with those symptoms, then they will seek medical help for them. Here, this U.S. government employee reported subtle and vague but abnormal sensations of sound and pressure. Pressure where? Well, let's just go with the brain. The employee reported experiencing a variety of physical symptoms from late 2017 until April, but we don't get to know what they were. Medical teams are heading to China to address the issue. So this one American employee has subtle and vague uh, and some physical symptoms, we don't get to know what they are, but we've got medical teams heading to China. The medical indications are very similar and entirely consistent with the medical indications that have taken place in Americans working in Cuba. I guess the New York Times expects their readers to then research the symptoms that the Americans were experiencing in Cuba. But here, Mild traumatic brain injury can show up as headache, dizziness, nausea, poor memory, and a general foggy sensation. So, I guess we are all experiencing mild traumatic brain injury. Those of you who have left comments saying you're experiencing headaches and dizziness and nausea and poor memory and foggy sensation. Well, not quite sure what that means. They could have explained it, but they don't. Starting in late 2016, diplomats posted to the United States Embassy in Havana. They began complaining of hearing strange retching noises and suffering symptoms like headaches, dizziness, and loss of hearing. A total of 24, I said 23, 24 Americans were confirmed as suffering from the attacks. Most were diplomats or the diplomats' um, spouses. Cause of the illnesses in Cuba have not been confirmed. Cuba denies using any kind of sonic weapons against Americans at the U.S. Embassy. Um, this is strange. We're very sure that the brain injury in uh, quotes or okay to this employee in China it can't possibly have any background. Uh, there should be repeated screening for individual health causes, including psychological causes. 
but the first sentence, there's no background. It can't possibly have any background. But then they say they should be repeated for individual health screening for health causes, including psychological causes. Okay, so I guess they know the background of this individual. They know their medical history. So they're saying that it doesn't have anything to do with any kind of medical issue that they already have. So they need to be screened, screened for medical issues. But don't you think that would have happened? All right. So while in China, you guys, if you experience any unusual acute auditory or sensory phenomena accompanied by unusual sounds or piercing noises, do not attempt to locate their source. Instead, move to a location where the sounds are not present. All right. Um, sending medical teams due to one person experiencing what we don't really know except for them hearing noises uh, seems a little bizarre to me when you have 24 embassy employees coming down with the same or similar symptoms and they're all stating that they heard noises, well then you got something. One employee? All right, um, I can't make heads or tails of anything anymore, but I do want to show you that we are being attacked, okay? I posted a video on what was taking place last night with the harp rings and what looks like laser beam attacks here in Nevada. Well, it seems that they are ongoing. And all I can tell you is when you see laser beams crossing, it's not good. And these are, well, I tried to locate on Google Earth where they were coming from. If anybody wants to scroll around, go ahead. I couldn't find it. Um, but we still have these harp rings that are shooting off. Here in uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, Missouri. I'm posting this because I don't know what is taking place here, but something is going on. This is unusual, but they seem to be appearing more frequently. We also have them going on. Minnesota into um, North Dakota. What are they doing here? Maine. Well, I am going to um, tell you I am experiencing something tonight that I have not experienced, not that I can recall, but it literally feels like the skin on my face is burning, burning. And it has for the last hour. Um, 
The buzzing is very, very loud. I'll bring you to the National Mosaic. And yes, we have an awful lot of these ultra low frequencies being emitted from uh, NEXRAD stations, radar stations here in Greer, South Carolina. And I live in Anderson. These ultra low frequencies are being emitted and Columbia. Sonic weapons are ultra low frequencies. And you can see here's what I'm not sure what this is. It looks like some kind of laser being used. All right, let me just bring you to Sonic Weapons. Sonic Weapons exists spanning the infrasonic, ultrasonic, and audible ranges. Because they are weapons which direct sound on a target and sound is energy, they are directed energy weapons. They produce both psychological and physical effects. They're highly directional devices, which these ultra low frequencies are. Um, they can transmit painful audible sound into an individual's ear at great distance. Infrasonic generators can cause negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, depression, as well as biological symptoms like nausea, vomiting, organ damage, burns, or death, depending on the frequency and power. Within the extremely low frequency region of the spectrum, infrasound, infrasound sorry, is usually not heard, but it can be if the power level is sufficient. Ultrasound begins in the very low frequency range at about 20 gigahertz just above human hearing. You know, this buzzing as I'm reading, it's, I, I, it's, I did read comments from some of you who said that even just last night the buzzing was incredibly loud. Resonance can be induced electromagnetically by an infrasonic pulse generator, which can establish a link, for instance, to a person's inner organs by resonating into their chest area. Once this connection occurs, the power level of the generator can be increased, which would automatically transfer the energy to the person. If the power level is moderate, the person may experience pain, in the chest area or their organs may vibrate. Increasing power level will destroy their organs or give the person a heart attack. Weaponized devices consisting of a directional antenna dish which can send acoustic pulses to a general or specific area and this is what you're seeing. happening all over these radar post pulses pulses I can't believe I'm having difficulty talking um, they can target the brain cause brain injury these changes in brain frequencies can cause changes in brain chemistry which then influence thoughts and emotions they can transmit directed energy using an exact frequency and modulation, which will trigger a precise chemical reaction in the brain, which in turn will produce a specific emotion in the targeted individual. 
They travel great distances, as ultra-low frequencies do. They can travel up to 300 miles. They easily pass through most buildings and vehicles. And they're sensed by the ears, but at high power levels, it can couple with the body and you can feel vibrations. And many, you know, we have the Gwen Towers, which are ground-based frequencies. Many people have noted that they can feel a vibration coming through. If they're lying on a bed, have their feet on the floor, I have frequently felt a vibration just with my feet on the floor. Ultra-low frequencies can cause avalanches, earthquakes, volcanoes, volcano eruptions, um, infras infrasound, causes a variety of biological symptoms depending on the frequency and power level. The higher the power level, the greater the damage. The effects include fatigue, pressures in the air, in the ear, visual blurring, drowsiness, imbalance, disorientation, vertigo, Vibration of internal organs, severe intestinal pain, nausea, vomiting. High power levels can liquefy bowels and resonate the internal organs, causing death. Excuse me. I don't know if you heard that cat uh, outside, but I thought a cat fight was about to start. Anyway. Infrasound can also cause feelings of pressure in the chest, choking, irregular breathing patterns, and respiratory incapacitation. Psychological effects, depending on the frequency and power, can um, cause loss of concentration, disgust, apathy, sadness, depression, fear, anxiety, and panic attacks, um, and irritability in the targeted population. And I have to say, I have been feeling feelings that I, I can't really explain. Irritable? Yes, um, a fear, feeling a lack of motivation that I have to kind of continually push through, and very low in terms of just feeling down, but feeling in a way that is uncharacteristic of me. So, I know that many of you are also experiencing an awful lot these days. So yes, these ultra-low frequencies can cause earthquakes, localized earthquakes. They can cause a large room within a building, which can act like a resonance chamber and they can upset the foundation, causing a miniature earthquake. They can cause tickling in the mouth, nose area, discomfort, heating of the skin. And I can't believe what I am experiencing. The skin on my face literally feels like it's being burned. Abdominal pains, um, burns, heating of the body up to lethal temperatures. Another very painful effect, bone resonation, which could cause a person's bones to literally explode. They can aim it at the head, resonating skull bones, causing people to hear voices. 
Early in the 1990s, Russia had created a sonic cannon, which consisted of an infrasonic, infrasonic generator connected to a radar dish. Radar dishes. Okay. The pulsing radar. Um, so it could also be adjusted to cause effects ranging from physical discomfort up to death, shortness, um, effects short of death are abdominal pains, nausea, and vomiting. I may have just read that, I'm sorry. Yeah, these frequencies affect our brains, affect our ability to speak, articulate, to pronounce words. In 1997, an FAS report described that the U.S. was developing such a weapon to cause these exact same effects. Then on July 16, 2002, ABC News announced in their Sonic Bullets Acoustic Weapon of the Future report that the U.S. military had in its possession a sonic cannon, a sonic weapon just like the Russians. This new technology, they declared, is likely to affect almost every aspect of our lives in ways we can only begin to imagine. Links are below.